there, it's Amy Kunkel, Stampin' Up! Demonstrator and blogger at crazybeautiful.com. Today I am going to do a tutorial for splitcoaststampers.com. So what we're doing today is showing you three different ways to create that light to dark gradient on your card background. I'm going to be starting with my watercolor technique. And for that you're going to want to use watercolor paper. I'm using an aqua painter and that just allows me to add water while I am painting. So you just want to keep a little paper towel handy and I'm going to add a little bit of ink. I'm using Stampin' Up's Watermelon Wonder. Start out by squeezing water onto the paper. I'm using the larger of the aqua painters. Uh, brush tips because it's um, a great way to add color quickly when you have a larger brush. So just go ahead and continue to get the rest of the cardstock wet. I'm going to try to concentrate more of the color towards this end. Um, as you add water, your paper might tend to curl, so I like to cut it uh, my card base a little bit larger when I begin and also that allows me to be able to trim off the edges and hold the edges down as needed. So you're just going to add ink and drag the color and the water down as you go. Keep your paper towel handy to dab the edges for water and color that might be pooling. And at any time you can just use your paper towel to remove some of the water and or ink. So this is a really kind of free flowing technique. So the idea is to just use this one rich color to get a really dark tone and then blend it all the way down to a light tone. So you're just going to set that aside and let that dry. I am using my brayer. Um, I really like this brayer. It's my Stampin' Up! brayer. It's, uh, it gives a little bit and I feel like that helps the color to blend. And I'm going to start with a light, really light color and a more dark bold color. I kind of like to turn it to the side and that way it actually is more linear um, like that. So you'll kind of see as I go. I'm going to ink it up and then I'm actually going to roll off one uh, revolution I guess you could say and then come on and just very lightly add color rolling and shifting up. So this is going to be our light end, this is going to be our dark end. The next time that you ink it up, I would not roll it off. I would just go ahead and roll it again in the same kind of way. The initial revolution that the wheel turns is going to be the darkest and then you're just going to keep adding color. Okay, so you're going to do this about three times, adding color with the lightest of the two ink pads. Now this will kind of max out at the darkest that you can get. Um, so this is pool party. So this is about the darkest that my pool party is going to get. You can always come back and add just a little bit of extra color at the bottom and then blend it with your brayer. So I'm going to move on to my darker color. I'm going to turn it back sideways and you'll see I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to ink it up and I'm going to roll off one revolution. Come on here and add my ink. Just going back and forth up towards the lighter end. So I'm going to slide it down just a little bit and then come back. And this is a little bit more of a you might have more lines in it. Just keep repeating that as dark as you want it and then the more that you go over it 
with a little bit or no ink, you will blend those lines out even more. So sometimes I like the lines to show up. It's really just a preference. You can always come back and just go over it again with a lighter color. And you'll notice I'm inking up my brayer the long way, so I really get as much coverage as possible. So that's a ombre background using a brayer. And the last ombre technique that I'm going to show you is using a dauber or a sponge. I'm going to use just a sponge today because it really works well for covering larger areas. And I have three shades of yellow. I'm going with the So Saffron, Crushed Curry, and Hello Honey from Stampin' Up. And you're just going to dab that directly onto your ink pad. And then starting from kind of the side off of your cardstock, you're just going to roll it and apply the ink like that. Again, kind of having this bottom as the darker section and going up. So I'm going to start down here and I'm going to kind of work my way up just adding a little bit more ink each time. This technique probably does take a little bit longer but you definitely have the most control in blending your color this way. And kind of like I did with the brayer, I'm going to come back in with my lightest color and just even out and blend out that color. There we go. Now that we've done all three of these, I'm going to just show you with the watercolor paper. You can always flip it over and using your bone folder, just flatten it out a little bit because it does tend to curl up a little. Before I make this into a card, I'm going to trim it down. Remember, I kind of enlarged it so that I could trim off the edges. To finish off these cards, I just did some white heat embossing with the watercolor words from Stampin' Up! And I'm just going to grab some coordinating twine and kind of finish each of them in a monochromatic way, keeping it sort of in that clean and simple um, card design, which is sort of one of my favorite things. And I'm going to add a couple sequins on, so let me just finish this up for you. Make sure to see these finished cards in the Split Coast Gallery and over on my blog. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day. Bye.